With 2020 now firmly in the rearview mirror, a new year means a host of new milestones with this year being no different. As we kickstart 2021, the year ahead will see some significant video game anniversaries for some of the medium's biggest franchises. Today, I'm looking ahead at some of the biggest video game anniversaries of the year and what we could expect to see from each franchise. The Legend of Zelda, 35 years. Arguably this year's biggest and most anticipated anniversary is The Legend of Zelda, the action-adventure title released on the NES in 1986, and the series has grown into one of the most beloved and esteemed in the history of video games. So what could we see? There have been plenty of rumors in the lead up to this anniversary, however, nothing has been officially announced yet. Last year, to celebrate Super Mario Bros. 35th anniversary, Nintendo released Super Mario 3D All-Stars, so there is some expectation that they may release a similar collection for Zelda turning the big 3-5. The prevailing theory is a compilation of Wind Waker, Twilight Princess, and Skyward Sword will be making its way onto the Switch. There's also hope and anticipation that Nintendo will bless us with more information on The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2. This sequel was announced at E3 in 2019, but as expected, apart from a few rumors, has gone quiet since. One of the strongest rumors claimed that the title was due for a 2020 release. However, if that was true, the pandemic could have easily caused it to slip into a convenient 2021 launch window. Nintendo also released a handful of smaller titles for the Super Mario Bros. 35th anniversary, and it will be interesting to see if they follow suit here. A Legend of Zelda Battle Royale, in the same vein of Super Mario Bros. 35, is a possibility, and they have a plethora of handheld games they could give the Link's Awakening treatment to. Metroid, 35 years. Alongside Link, Samus made her bow into gaming in 1986 in the NES hit Metroid. The game was revered for its atmosphere as players explored an alien planet, found power-ups, and fought aliens. While Metroid as a franchise hasn't quite hit the lofty heights of The Legend of Zelda, its cultural relevance can't be ignored as the series played a huge part in the creation of the Metroidvania genre. What could we see? Rumors of an upgraded Metroid Prime trilogy have been flying around for some time now, and there seems to be no better time to release it than 2021. There was also a rumor of Metroid Samus Returns getting a Switch port that surfaced towards the end of last year that may or may not come into fruition. Like The Legend of Zelda, Metroid fans are eagerly awaiting information on the next mainline entry in the series. Metroid Prime 4 was revealed back at E3 2017, but has seemingly had some development trouble since then and still seems a way off. While some information and updates may be a possibility this year, I wouldn't expect a Metroid Prime 4 release anytime soon. Sonic the Hedgehog, 30 years. Sega's answer to Mario, Sonic the Hedgehog turns 30 this year after releasing on the Sega Genesis in 1991. The Gotta Go Fast Hedgehog has never been too far from the limelight, regularly featuring in video games, cartoons, and most recently, a live-action movie. So what could we see? Sonic has already received a cool new logo ahead of the series' 30th anniversary, and it's already been confirmed that there will be new Sonic games, digital content events, major announcements, and a tailored licensing program. Spin-offs aside, we've not had a brand new mainline Sonic game since both Sonic Mania and Sonic Forces released back in 2017. It'll be interesting to see if Sega leans into either of these games or takes a brand new route. The rest of the Sonic catalog is generally widely available, so it remains to be seen if Sega will pull together any kind of extra compilations. F-Zero, 30 years. One of the more dominant franchises on this list, F-Zero celebrates its 30th anniversary in the West in 2021. The high-octane futuristic racing series is one that's beloved by fans, but doesn't always get the recognition it deserves from Nintendo. It begs the question as to why. With Mario Kart 8 Deluxe still selling a staggering amount of units, Nintendo could easily capitalize on this desire for a second top-tier racer on the Switch. What could we see? Uh, probably not a lot. <laughs> Nintendo seems to have shoved the beloved racing series aside and forgotten about it over the last few years. With two other massive Nintendo franchises celebrating big milestones this year, plus the game's 30th anniversary already passing in Japan, it's highly unlikely that F-Zero will be returning. Back in 2015, Shigeru Miyamoto did say that he would like to bring the franchise back, provided Nintendo could come up with a controller interface that would make sense for it. F-Zero GX director Toshihiro Nagoshi also recently stated that he'd be open to working on a new game in the series. However, 
these were both likely just passing remarks as Miyamoto hasn't mentioned the franchise since and Nagoshi has been hired to work on the Yakuza franchise for a number of years now. Pokemon, 25 years. Diamond and Pearl, 15 years. Pokemon Go, five years. Maybe the only anniversary that could topple The Legend of Zelda's is Pokemon, as the mega franchise turns 25 years old. Pokemon is the highest grossing franchise in media history, making an estimated $100 billion since its 1996 inception. And you can bet they're going to go all out to celebrate this year. What could we see? Astonishingly, a new Pokemon Snap is already confirmed for release in 2021, and that's likely to be the tip of the iceberg. Pokemon Let's Go Johto has also been heavily rumored since last summer, a game that would certainly go down well. Diamond and Pearl also turned 15 this year, and they are the oldest mainline games yet to receive a re-release, so it's reasonable to expect something on that front as well. We may also get details on the next new generation of Pokemon, as we generally receive a new one every three years or so. By the end of 2021, it will also have been two years since Sword and Shield launched and the DLCs also have now wrapped up, so it will be interesting to see if the Pokemon company shows their hand here. Aside from that, Nintendo and the Pokemon Company have an absolutely cracking backlog of spin-off titles that they could pull from. Pokemon Stadium, Coliseum, Pinball, and Puzzle League are all titles that would be worthy of returning. Pokemon Go also turns 5 this year, meaning that the summer of Pokemon Go was half a decade ago. Niantic seems to now be finally finding its stride in engaging real-world events. GoFest was playable worldwide this year, and there's a new Kanto event on the horizon, so there will certainly be a blowout event this summer as Niantic looks to better the $1 billion they made in 2020. The N64 and Super Mario 64, 25 years. Now we are talking. Nintendo's first foray into 3D turns 25 this year, although for some, it's not the company's most fondly remembered console of all time. It's hard to deny the quality of the games it released on this platform. There was Super Mario 64, Ocarina of Time, Banjo-Kazooie, Mario Kart, GoldenEye, and so, so many more. So what could we see? Nintendo has gone quiet on the classic mini console front, with the SNES Mini releasing in 2017. What better time to bring back this slightly gimmicky fad and give us a Nintendo 64 classic, loaded with some of the console's best games? Or updating the Nintendo Switch online service to include a handful of N64 titles would be a welcome addition. At this point, I'd even settle for them just releasing some of the console's better games for sale on the Nintendo eShop. Resident Evil, 25 years. It's been 25 years since players first visited Raccoon City on the PlayStation, and the series has since almost certainly become the premier video game horror franchise. Although the franchise lost a little bit of its edge between Resident Evil 5 and 6, it seemed to find its footing again with Resident Evil 7, and the future is looking bright. What could we see? Resident Evil's eighth mainline entry, Village, is already confirmed for a PC, PS5, and Xbox Series X slash S release this year. There's also the rumor that Capcom could be deciding to follow its pattern of releasing remakes, and that the revered Resident Evil 4 could be getting the makeover treatment this year. Resi is getting a lot of different adaptations over the coming year. The rebooted Resident Evil movie recently wrapped shooting ahead of its release in September, and there are also two different Resident Evil TV shows in the works, one live action and one animated. Crash Bandicoot, 25 years. I speak for everyone at DualShockers when I say that our favorite marsupial joins our video game anniversaries list as the franchise turns 25 years old. Crash was supposed to be Sony's answer to Mario, and although he never quite hit those lofty heights, he is undoubtedly one of the most iconic characters in PlayStation history. What could we see? We've been inundated with Crash Bandicoot titles over the last few years. The Insane Trilogy released in 2017, Crash Team Racing Nitro Fuel that followed two years later, and last year we got the first new major entry in the series in years, with Crash Bandicoot 4, It's About Time. Because of this, I wouldn't expect a great deal from Crash this year. However, we do have the mobile runner to get excited about. Persona, 25 years. The Persona series has been thrust into the mainstream over recent years. Persona 5 became an instant classic, and the recent re-release of Persona 4 Golden on Steam has made the series even more accessible than ever. So what could we see? We already have Persona 5 Strikers coming to the West next month, and Atlas kindly dropped a bunch of Persona soundtracks on Spotify earlier this month. 
A Switch port of Persona 5 slash Persona 5 Royal would, of course, be a welcome addition to those. In an interview with Gematsu, Atlas was well aware of the series' 25th anniversary, saying, In 2021, we are also planning on the Persona 25th anniversary commemoration project. Please look forward to it. The GameCube, Super Smash Bros. Melee, Luigi's Mansion, Pikmin, and Animal Crossing all are celebrating 20 years. Like the N64, the Nintendo GameCube celebrates a big milestone this year, turning 20, and along with it, some major games. Super Smash Bros. Melee, Pikmin, Animal Crossing, and Luigi's Mansion are some of the standouts turning 20 with Nintendo's cube-shaped console. So what could we see? Probably not a lot. Nintendo is unlikely to do much to celebrate the console's anniversary alone, aside from maybe some social media content. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is already the biggest celebration that the series could even ask for, with three new DLC characters still due to come. The most we could hope for is new entries into either the Luigi's Mansion or Pikmin franchises, both of which had successful titles released recently. There's also an opportunity for Nintendo to throw some kind of event together into the ever-popular Animal Crossing New Horizons. The Xbox and Halo, 20 years. 2021 marks 20 years since Microsoft took the plunge and entered the home console market with the Xbox. The console was never the most popular on the market, selling around 24 million units during its life cycle, but what it did do was spawn a whole host of great franchises, including Halo, which also turns 20 this year. What could we see? With Microsoft's backward compatibility offering already so strong, it's hard to imagine what it could do to celebrate its original console's release, at least in terms of new products, especially as the company has already re-released the Duke. Much like the original Xbox's library, Halo's back catalog has already been given the compilation treatment with the ever-growing Halo Master Chief Collection. 2021 will still be a big year for the franchise, however, with Infinite due for release at some point following its delay and the Halo TV series also due for this year. Overwatch, five years. Overwatch has evolved into one of the most beloved shooters of all time. Its accessible yet competitive nature has resonated with fans, and it's only gone from strength to strength in the five years since it was released. So what can we expect? News on Overwatch 2 has been fairly quiet since it was announced back in 2019, and that doesn't look to be changing anytime soon, with Jeff Kaplan stating that, quote, the game still has a long ways to go. In terms of the original Overwatch, you can be sure that Blizzard will throw a big event together to celebrate the upcoming milestone. What do you think? What are going to be the biggest anniversaries in video games this year? Make sure to let us know in the comments below and remember to like this video and subscribe to DualShockers for all things video game anniversaries.